Welcome back. Now, it was a big week for Waterford with the welcome news that finally the government has approved a €5 million Euro investment in Waterford Airport. Of course, this money comes with conditions, namely that the private investment of £7 million is provided first and that the project doesn't overrun its £12 million budget. Now, of that £7 million, £2 million is being provided by the councils of Waterford, Wexford and Kilkenny and the remaining five is being put up by private investors Glanbia, Coolmore Stud, Dawn Meats, Stafford Holt sale Waterford Distillery, Noel Frisby and aviation expert Connor McCarthy. Connor spoke to Damien Tiernan on Friday's day shit today and I thought given the week that's in it it was worthwhile to play it again for you now. Well I, I guess uh, what what uh, I bring along with the other investors is a, a passion for the South East and uh, a passion to see what, what a, a very uh, potentially uh, viable piece of infrastructure which is the current airport uh, develop to its proper potential and therefore enable this uh, enables it to bring tourists to the region directly into uh, the region of Waterford, Kilkenny and uh, also Carlow and Wexford <laughs> and uh, also to enable uh, people who live in the area to have a much easier access um, particularly to the UK. Tell me about your experience Connor, please. Well, I guess I'm a, I'm a lifelong uh, aviator, I suppose you could call me. I started in aviation at 16. I've been in the business now for over 41 years, and um, I've I've worked across the world and still do uh, with a, a range of airlines. I spent a long time at Aer Lingus and finished up there as chief executive of Aer Lingus Commuter, and then uh, moved to Ryanair for a number of years as their chief operations officer. And um, for the last 20 years now, I've been kind of flying my wares across the world, helping people start airlines. So I was involved in the founder of Air Asia in Southeast Asia and the founder of Air Asia X, founder of Jetstar in Australia and also an airline in Mexico known as Viva Aerobus. So and still involved with most of those airlines as well today. And you live in Dublin, but you have a, a summer house in Dunmore, is that it? Yes, we've uh, kind of, uh, Dunmore's our second home really and uh, we love the place and uh, over the last 25 years, I guess we've, we got to know Waterford and, and the whole region much better. And uh, I can see as somebody who, who visits the region how much it has to offer and how much potential there is there. And uh, it's been a source of frustration for me to see the airport, which has badly needed a, a jet-capable runway for a long time, being left without it. Uh, so it's, it's great news this week that we've got the government on side and we yeah. can press ahead with, with uh, a relatively ambitious plan to develop that runway and to develop the the necessary uh, associated works and you sound like that runway. Hmm? You sound like the type of man, Connor, that wouldn't be putting money into a, uh, a white elephant or a sort of a, a dreamy boat type of project. I'd say you're a fairly practical man and that any investment that you'd make in this particular project would be done so uh, in the full knowledge that... It is a very viable product. Um, well, I suppose I, I do remember my first week's wages were eighteen pounds uh, when I was uh, an apprentice in Aer Lingus. So uh, I, I certainly know the value of a few quid. But um, no, I've made some mistakes, and you make some judgments. But I think this is this is a risk worth taking. Um, yes, I do believe there's there is a significant opportunity for uh, the region in this and. Uh, I, I wouldn't be uh, back in it if I didn't think there was going to be a success in the long run. And is it uh, impolite to ask how much money yourself and the likes of Noel Frisby or others will be putting in? Well, not impolite at all. I won't be telling you, but there you go. <laughs> we're going to we're going to between ourselves uh, and the private investors. We're going to put in five million. Um, the councils who have been extremely supportive. This is. This project has been live really for over 18 months. We've been trying to uh, put a business plan together. We've been trying to get uh, government support for a long time on this. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's been a challenge to, to get the support necessary and to get people on the belief boat. And what will you, we're all there. Uh, yeah, and what will you get back for this? Do you get a stake in the airport? Is there a percentage? Do you become part owners or, or, or what happens? Yes, we, we'll we'll take an equity stake in the airport. I mean, as things stands, I think the the minister himself even said it. Uh, like the airport was, you know, uh, unviable as it stood, and uh, its future 
uh, well, actually, I, I would have thought its future was almost doomed if it if it didn't have this additional investment. At least now, with the investment, the airport can attract uh, efficient modern um, jets such as the Airbus 320 and the Boeing 737. And that means that, uh, you know, the airlines that operate in and out of Waterford from London, for example, can offer competitive fares. It means that the people living in the region can now take a, a, a very nice, predictable, short drive to their local airport and take a flight at a very attractive fares compared to the alternatives in uh, Dublin, for example, where the road system is congested and where the airport is congested and where the fares have been steadily rising over the last 10 years. What do you think of uh, front page of the Irish Independent this morning where the Minister John Halligan is, and Shane Ross are, are in for criticism, for a sort of a, a kickback against this idea of giving €5 million Euros in a grant to an airport with no flights. There seems to be some political movers, manoeuvres, whether it's a Dublin centre thing, whether it's a political attack on Shane Ross and John Halligan, but there's obviously some people stirring it up saying that uh, this money shouldn't be given to Waterford. You see, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, pretty much a private sector person myself and I I certainly don't subscribe to the idea that that people should get handouts. And uh, so in that regard, uh, I I find that a bit surprising. Here we have private sector stepping up saying, we'll fund pretty much 50% of this uh, project if you guys fund the other 50%. On top of that, the airport, which is currently being uh, subvented, each year to in order to, that it can provide the search and rescue service that's essential to the southeast um has you know is going to continue in some form so why not spend a little bit of uh, tar that's going to make this ship uh, float rather than not spend a heap worth of tar as they say um i think you'll always find some detractors but th- this is a this is a risk um it's not guaranteed by any means we don't have for example an airline yet signed up to it, but we have a plan and a strategy to attract some airlines that could come in. We're going to have uh, discounts available for the first movers on any one route, so those airlines will, will get uh, marketing support, which is essentially will enable them to develop the route themselves, and it'll give them some time to do that without having too much competition on the route that could kill all, all players. And then um, in that regard, I think it's it's very positive. As far as the economics for the taxpayer are concerned, there's a study that has, that was done um, a number of years ago, and the study uh, identified that with one daily flight to London, that the region and the government, the exchequer, would benefit to the tune of over 33 million euros a year. So when you think about a 5 million investment being paid back in less than three months of uh, service. That's a pretty good investment for the taxpayer, I would have thought, as opposed to the same people who who might be uh, neighbours of mine here in Dublin, I don't know. Uh, but they haven't said a word about the fact that the DAA are about to spend two billion, not two million now, two billion euros developing Dublin airports, third runway and associated facilities. What's the time frame? Obviously, we have um, planning permission is going to be put in for the second end of the runway. And uh, are we looking? What, what, what would you expect the time frame to be, Colin, Connor? Uh, our objective is to try and have this runway ready for operations next summer. I mean, there's no way that you'd be hoping an airline would start it in the winter, which is a traditional loss making period for airlines. And uh, so we would we would have an objective and an ambition to have that runway available for operations next summer, summer 2020. That depends on a lot of things, of course. It depends on uh, the planning permission. It depends on the construction program moving ahead. In, within a, and it also is clearly important that we manage to achieve that within the budget of 12 million. And it's definitely going to happen, is it? You heard it. That's going to happen. Conor McCarthy talking to Damien Tiernan there. Now, before we go, another final bit of good news for a Waterford businessman, Conor Walsh. Conor has been taking part in Ireland's Best Young Entrepreneur competition. Uh, he joins me now in studio. Conor, we spoke to you. You won 
the Waterford heat, if you like, in the best established category. You went down to Cork on Wednesday night for the regional finals correct. and you won there too. That's correct, yeah. I didn't need you yet. Tell me about that process then. So this was a regional final. About how many other businesses would have you have been up against? Um, so there was, there was uh, obviously I won the Waterford County a, a few weeks back. Um, so there was there was a good six or eight in our category. I think in the in the finals of Warford, there was an over over about eighty applications, be true three three different um, categories: startup idea and and uh, best established. So then we went down to Cork and, and Cork was Cork County was bro- bro- is broken up into four different local enterprise offices, and uh, we, we so there was a final uh, between four 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 applicants in my category. And uh, we took the goal in that one there. So on Wednesday night, we were very happy. Were you surprised by that? Or had you had a, ch- a chance to assess your competition before you went down? I, I didn't spend too much time worrying about the competition, mm. I suppose. You know, I can only be who I, who I am and uh, deliver deliver on what I, uh, I have to offer. Um, I got the names a couple of days before. I had a quick little uh, scan on Google, all right. I noticed, you know, there were, one was a robotics company uh, providing services to some large companies and look, you know, looked like a good, co- a good operation. And then uh, another company was virtual reality, so they providing uh, training and um, the, the equipment for virtual reality into the education system in Ireland and America. And then there was another guy then who does uh, chartered services and all kind of um, high end kind of boat and uh, services on the river and the harbour in Cork City. So yeah, tough enough competition there, tough but enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happens now? You go through to the national finals. Through to the national finals now in September now in Google's uh, headquarters in Dublin, um, and be up against the uh, the thirty one. So there's thirty one Leos in total. So so I suppose there's five now. That I've won out of the best five out of our five in the region. So there'll be another twenty six then left um, who would have picked you know overalls in their in their regions. So I don't know exactly how many. But how many? Yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah. It's yeah. probably around f- maybe four to five or six even in my category, you know. Yeah. And as you progress in the competition, do you have more work to do on your business? Is there more kind of presentations, anything like that? Do you have to kind of do yeah, more mentoring? Yeah, I, um, I suppose really it's, it's all about kind of how you bring across your company, you know. So I, my presentation, we, we advanced on our presentation from the from the local win. Um, so I'd, I'm I'm assuming that there will be some more work to do, you know, a lot more prep work, I suppose, you're, you're going up against... Uh, tougher, a tougher, a tougher, tougher competition. I suppose really, they're, they're winners are from all over the country. So, um, oh look, it's it's a kind of it nearly it's a it's a winners event from the minute you get into it. You've all you you've won really a sense, you know. But it's, obviously, it's nice to get through the different stages and to come out on top each time. So, yeah, and I'm definitely assuming there will be work to do. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of work, I mean, you are so busy. Your business, you're in the construction industry you do retrofitting of homes and of course what's really setting you apart now is this patent that you've got going on Correct, yeah. um, we, you can you can explain to people what that's all about so I suppose we've been making energy efficient homes for the last many making homes energy efficient for the last 10 years now so we've been concentrating on old buildings um, and now we're, we're very much involved in new construction projects and my I have a patent pending for a, a product that I believe will deliver on the, the future regulations coming down the line next year you know so we're, we're, we're getting and ready to get up for the next car really essentially I suppose What are um, those regulations? Um, so it's near zero energy building it's coming in next December so currently we have an A rated home um, and it's, it's, it concentrates on the, house, the whole house as a unit whereas the NZ will concentrate on each individual element so it just, it, it's just it's just a slight advancement on where we are now but it's it's just going to set the to set the the target, I suppose, for each element of a house. So your you know your walls is an A rated wall, your roof is an A rated roof. You know, so it's just drilling it down, and it's just it's just formalising the regulations more. But it's about as far as it's going to go now because we're almost at uh, zero energy usage in the house because we're trying to combat it with 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 um, solar or you know renewable energy sources. So it's about as low as it can mm. go, really. You know, and really with the climate change agenda front and centre now, and we saw that in the local elections and how well the Greens did and all this yes. talk about climate change and really this is this is a great time for what you do and to be in the business you're in. 
Oh, without a doubt, yeah. It's really, it's really starting to come on now. I suppose uh, 2009, I thought it'd come a bit quicker. Um, but yeah. <laughs> you know, it took 10 years. Yeah. Um, but it's... Uh, we're, You're we're, a visionary, Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, but no, it's, it, it is. It's coming on stream. I would uh, you definitely like to see um, more, I suppose. More, they're, not, they're not doing enough around climate change, really. You know, we're, we're, we're reducing the energy consumption in homes. Um, and, and we're working on the retrofit industry. You, you would like to see larger projects take place. So hopefully... They, uh, we, we'll we'll start, you know, delivering on these commitments that we have made, rather than paying fines and huge monetary yeah. values out. You know, you'd rather see that money go into projects, you know, in local communities and and, and, and work to reduce our carbon emissions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the patent process that you're undergoing at the moment, how long does that take? I mean, when do you think you'll finally? Sure. Like, as I, yeah, I suppose we're we've been working on this in the last few years, really. You know, um, so it's just about commercialising the project, the product now. Um, and we're just about there with that really we're, we're, we're hoping to have it ready for market now in the next couple of months and well rolled out this year and then uh, the patent process will find the patent ownership will follow from that then I suppose when you when you're starting to commercialise it and it, it you know, you can see buy in from from customers then you we put the more put more money in so the WIT are involved in it and, uh, and obviously myself and I'm be hoping to bring in one or two investors. Um, so, so we put more money into the patent as the the commercialisation of the project product comes on, you know. Yeah. So very busy time. So this is all going on. You'll have the mm. national finals in September. That's so great. you know, hopefully, when we talk to you again in the aftermath of that, uh, yeah. you know, you'll have you'll have brought it on, and you'll. You know, Hopefully. you're having more investment and <laughs> more work. Well, you're, you won't be short of work anyway. Yeah, you know, in yeah. your industry, it's, uh, yeah, it's you're good. probably nearly struggling in that regard. Are you in getting people to work for you and with you? Yeah, and, yeah well, it was just everyone wants their, their product, the project's done. You know, I suppose mm. I'm, I'm looking away. Some people have come to me this year um, and I've said to them, look, we won't get you in this year. We'll get you in next year. Um, and they've accepted that. Um, and some people say, look, we're, we're willing to wait and we'll hold off. It's, you know, it's a big commitment from people. Um, uh, so it's nice. It's nice for someone to wait, and then other people look. They want it done straight away, or they, they can't wait. Um, so you just you just assess it on a job by job basis. But no, there's, there's definitely volume there without a doubt. Yeah. You know? Well, hopefully we'll find some people to do the work on the airport runway for us as yeah. well. <laughs> la- la- labor, there's no doubt about it. The labor is a problem, I suppose, without a doubt. Um, we're lucky in the sense that we're not we're not overstretching ourselves, but um, we could we could double in size. But I know the labor is just not out there. All the, anyone that's in the industry is working and they're busy, and you know probably happy where they are but and this, I suppose this is why my product has been uh, brought to the market now uh, aiming to be brought to the market is, is is to alleviate the stresses of the labour shortages that we're going to experience really experience because we haven't even experienced them yet mm-hmm. when we start building these uh, the amount of houses that we, we, we need over the coming years you know yeah when it really scales up that's it Okay, well, listen, Connor, we'll talk to you again soon. No Thanks, Thanks a million for, for popping into Thank the studio you. to me today. Connor Walsh from MCON. Well, we're all out of time for this week. Hope you enjoyed listening to the show. And remember, you can listen back to it or you can listen back to any previous show on the WLR website. So for now, from me, have a great week and thanks for listening.